Hello everyone, and welcome to the Legion World of Warcraft beta. Uh, we're going to be doing our Holy Paladin walkthrough now. Uh, unfortunately, some of the others are bugged, and I'm unable to create new characters. I'm stuck at certain points, so we're going to move to Holy for the time being, and possibly go back uh, once Blizzard has a few things worked out. So let's get started. Let's get moving. First thing, you're going to go through the opening scenario. You're going to show up with this quest. What can I Talk do to this you? gentleman? Ah, it's good to see you on your feet. The members of the Council of Six are recuperating from their ordeal. The intensity of the teleportation spell can be disorienting. It seems you lost consciousness for a time, but at least you didn't awaken to find yourself stuck in a wall. Dalaran has been relocated to the Broken Isles. From here, we will spearhead the effort to acquire the Pillars of Creation and drive the Legion from Azeroth once and for all. And you'll get your Dalaran Hearthstone. Uh, it's basically your garrison Hearthstone now. In Tomes of the Tranquil Mine, you're going to want to save these. These are used to respec when you're out in the open world in dungeons and raids, etc. Uh, once we've turned this in, you can see we don't have any quests. What you have to do is walk around a little bit here in Dalaran to catch the trigger where you will be prompted to pick up your Paladin Artifact quest. Well, it's basically just your Paladin quest and it will lead to your art class hall and your artifact. So, we're going to go ahead and get rolling. Just running around taking a nice look. Dalaran looks pretty much the exact same as it did before, except here in the middle uh, is quite different. Uh, and there's a teleportation area that you'll be able to use. Thank the light I found you. There we are. I must speak with you at once. A critical decision must be made. The Legion devastated our forces at the Broken Shore. The mightiest army this world has ever known was reduced to cinders in moments. We must gather those with the conviction to save our home. Travered of Tears Guard I and Ord Trueheart have a matter of the utmost importance. As you can see, he, he doesn't care about my talking. <laughs> have each made plans to do just that, but we must not let them walk alone. I ask that you seek them out and guide them to Crassus's Landing, so that we may make this decision together. Excellent. So we'll go do that. My sincere apologies for the insistence, but we must speak immediately. He's uh. It's a little bugged. He's, Aye, they don't recognize the sometimes. One. Shield hill it is. There's no time to waste. Farewell to ye. Tyrosis. Now he's a good man. Count me in. There's too much danger about to turn down a wee bit of help. We Got may him. not be alone in this after all, Tahu. Let's see what Tyrosis has to say. And we'll head over here. And grab the other paladin. Get him on the way. Where is he? There he is. That's you're not who I was supposed to talk to. Oh Until we meet again, if there's any Up chance of jungle. finding aid, Katrina and I will come. And I'm not gonna listen to his bullcrap. You can, you'll see that when you play paladin on live. I'm glad you could join us. At your service. There we go. Thank you for helping us gather together. We must stand united. Our gathering has identified several weapons of immense power. In the right hands, these holy artifacts give us a fighting chance against the Legion. We cannot pursue all of them at once. We risk too much if we spread ourselves that thin. We must agree on where our efforts are best focused. This is why I asked you here. As one of the greatest champions, you must be our voice of reason and decide our next move. And a little bit unlike the warrior, uh, the warrior tier, or excuse me, the warrior artifact quest line. Uh, you'll be going through and grabbing your artifact right away instead of doing a uh, mini quest beforehand uh, to kind of show your class hall. I think we end up on our class hall at the very end. So uh, we'll click accept here. And, and here we go. Sisters, uh, we these are the three Paladin artifacts. But for the purposes gone, of the this video, we are going to be taking somewhere. the Holy Artifact. Uh, a secret order of Paladins has been watching over the resting place of the great Titan Watcher tier for hundreds of years. Histories tell that this powerful warhammer has buried at, that his powerful warhammer has buried there with him. Recent events have threatened the safety of their secret charge, and they have appealed for help from paladins across Azeroth and the Silver Hand. We'll talk about that a little bit more at the end uh, once we once we have the weapon and we've done the whole quest line. We'll look at all the abilities, all the talents, uh, take a look at the weapon. I'll show you the class hall and such. So we're going to select that picture. 
Azeroth will not fall while we stand. Excellent choice. There's no time to waste. Walk always in the light. It appears we've afforded a unique opportunity. A small order of paladins has come forward claiming to know the location of Tyr's tomb. They say they are protectors of his warhammer, but that the ancient weapon is now imperiled. I'd like you to speak with Traverd, their leader, to find out more about this artifact. May the light give you strength. And Traverd is right here. There he is. Well met. My order guards a powerful secret. We are the keepers of the final resting place of the mighty Tyr. Recent intrusions have proven his tomb's location to be secret no longer. We must protect the sacred relic stored there, the Silver Hand. May Tyr guide you. We must reclaim the Silver Hand before those with evil intent can seize it. To free it from the wards, we need relics called the Sparks of Tyr. I have one, as does my brother Galford. He journeyed to Northrend to seek aid from Tyr's homeland but has not returned. I must ask you to find him and his spark. Goodbye. Well, that My brother well. spoke of a dragon called Lanagosa at Wormrest Temple. Seek her out while I prepare a strike force for the tomb. Now you might be asking how you get to uh, Wormrest Temple from here. It's actually very simple. I'll show you right now. We talked about the middle of Dalaran being a little different, and we're going to get to see that right now. Uh, you're going to walk right onto this center platform right here. And that's going to take you down to the Chamber of the Guardian. And as you can see in the back, there are portals set up, uh, designed to make it a little bit easier to get around for these uh, quest purposes. I'm not going to talk about this room. Uh, we're just going to pass that. But that's a very important room. You're going to get used to that, acclimated to that. And we're going to take our portal to Worm Rest Temple to continue our quest line. Everything seems to end up here at some point, right? And here she is, Lanagosa. Right by the Quartermaster. What brings you out here? Ah, yes, a very studious sort he was, eager to hear stories of Tyr the Titan Keeper. I told him of the battle between Galakrond and Tyr, and how Kalakgo saw Tyr's severed hand at Galakrond's rests. Galford got very excited and left. Is your friend safe? In truth, I do not know. I will seek him out. I should get back to it. Galakron's rest can be dangerous. Perhaps a tracking spell will be of use. There. A bit of magic to help you follow in Galford's footsteps. Good luck. Okay. And as you can see, this is where we're going to be headed. And now this is something you probably... Oh, well, it works now. Unfortunately. <laughs> well, it's not as funny. Uh, earlier in the beta, if you came here, you did not have flying, so you would just fall to your have to blow cooldowns to stay alive. It was very unfortunate. It was very unfortunate. I died here many times. Ah, here we go. Your friend, your came friend, seeking and seeking answers. His mind, his flooded mind, by flooded memories, by memories, stored in the stored spark in the of the noble, of the noble watcher. watcher. He learned of he tears, learned of ancient, tears battle ancient battle against Gal against Galakrond, and of the hand, and of the he hand lost he in the lost dragon's in the dragon's mouth. All right. Well, we're not going to listen to that. I um, uh, don't really think anybody wants to hear her echo for the next five minutes. Now here's number two. A silver hand was forged by Jotun. Tears, dearest friend, for many ages. When Tyr found proof of Loken's betrayal, it was Jotun who stayed behind to hold off the Fallen Watcher's pursuit. Okay. Oh, 
this guy wants to get this done. Oh, that's another player. Interesting. I thought that was an NPC. Your friend sought out Jotun, but the spark did not warn him of the cruel curse with which Loken twisted the Watcher's mind. The paladin rushed to the chasm south of here, only to meet his doom. Alright, now we are heading to the chasm that leads down to the portals. Let's take a look at what we find. I've been it. looking oh, all over for you. Have you found... Oh, no. I am truly sorry. It looks as though your friend was crushed. What could have... Hello there. A just cause, hero. I shall stand with you again. What is this essence the giant speaks of? I would have words with you. My mind of the curse, for the moment. Loken's enchantment won't let me die. We have only a moment before I fall into madness again. Here is the spark. Take it and flee. Keep the memory of my fallen friend alive. And we'll use our Hearthstone. You can uh, speak to Lanagosa, and she'll take you to Dalaran as well. Uh, I'm just going to use my Hearthstone to speed things up a little bit. So that we're not having a, a super long video. I know some of my others have gone over an hour. Uh, but hopefully, maybe I can break that down a little bit. And we'll turn this in. I'm sure he's not going to be happy. Greetings. A terrible loss. We have the spark he held, though. And I have another. We must press on. Mourn Galford another day. To many know of its too many know of its location. The tomb must be closed forever. First, we must reclaim the hammer. Terosis has lent us a force to aid in the recovery of the hammer, and some of my order will meet us there as well. But I fear even that may not be enough. I'm glad we'll have you with us. Take the portal to Dalaran Crater, and then fly to Tears Fall Glades and meet us. I've marked the location on your map. Until we meet again. And once again, we're going you to You can heading. make your way there through the portal to Dalaran Crater. I will meet you there with additional... Efrina, find your brother and rally at the tomb. He didn't... He, again, he doesn't like it when I talk. Uh, you'll go down to the... The Guardian's Chamber. And take another portal. This one you have to be particularly careful about. I actually think all of the paladins uh, might have to go through this at some point. Uh, so you do want to have your bubble ready. I don't remember where I put it on my bar. Uh, there it is. We're going to take that. And just like on the live servers, if a mage was to port you here, uh, you have to be careful because you'll fall and die. Chiefs, got him. And we'll start heading up to uh, Tiraspal Glades. This will be a little bit of a long trip. 
Uh, one thing I do want to mention about the Holy Paladin, uh, it feels really good. Everything about it feels really good. I'm not sure, though, as opposed to some of the other healers, if you will be uh, having an easy time leveling uh, as a Holy Paladin. Um, unfortunately, if you want to start off with your, your uh, artifact weapons, you're definitely going to want to... brains did. Uh, you definitely are going to want to start the game with that. You're definitely going to have to quest with it, rather. Um, as you can see, you do have Crusader Strike and Consecration, uh, along with Holy Shock and Judgment, and there are modifiers that make it uh, a little bit better to level with, um, but as opposed to maybe the Resto Druid and such, it might be a little bit more difficult to play as a Paladin, but it's not horrible. It feels okay. Um, there's there's a little bit of downtime uh, in between using spells, so that that can be a little bit uh, detrimental. But I don't think it'll be I don't think it'll be the worst thing. I don't think people will be too upset uh, with how the healers play. Um, but here we are. We're almost there. As you can see, we're in Tears Fall Glades. Finally, doing something with this area. Here's Trevor. Ah, there you are. The area was secured at great cost. This cannot continue. We must retrieve the Silver Hand and destroy the entrance to the tomb. I will complete the ritual to release the hammer and collapse the tomb. But we must be quick. I can sense evil emanating from the tomb. You and I shall lead a small team in first. Let me know when you are ready. Goodbye. Just a brief swim, and we'll reach the tomb. Behold, the Tomb of Tyr, built by the mighty... Wait, these monsters dare befoul the tomb! This cannot stand! Destroy these abominations! me to see such destruction threaten the resting place of the Silver Hand. As you can see, you do, uh, in some of these dungeons... Look there! The Sacred Hammer's wards remain strong. First, we must purge this infestation. Let me know when you are ready. You will get uh, little groups like this where you have to heal um, the NPCs. It's a nice little addition where well met. you're not just beating on something. You actually have to know uh, a, a minor bit of what you're supposed to be doing. So, here we go. In order to enact the failsafe ritual, we will need to clear the room. Say the word and I will begin. Watch yourselves. Let us cleanse this chamber.
Well done, everyone. Let's wait. What is that? Portier. Last we can begin. After the ritual is complete and we have the hammer, the complex will collapse, sealing Tyr's resting place forever. Something is wrong. One of the other sparks isn't here. Wait. I can sense it below. Probably taken by one of those monsters. We must have it. We will begin the search when you are ready, champion. Greetings. Maybe. Once we clear an area, reinforcements will secure it. Onward, paladins! Sergeant Crusaders, secure this area. We will press on. Well met. I'll take care of this. Chasm oozes darkness. Light protect us. That thing has what we need. Prepare yourselves, friends. Well met. This area is very unstable now, thanks to the previous visitors. We need to kill that thing to get what we need, but I'm not sure it will do our. It will do to our surroundings. It would be best to kill it quick and get out of here. Say the word. Good Destroy the monster for the light. I need to get closer.
last of my brothers and sisters. I am all that remains of the Tears Guard. I have the spark. The battle this place has seen has warped reality too much. We must finish this now. Wounded! Aid them while I cover you! Our enemies will Life fall. Life to consume. A dark presence emerges from the void. Something big! We need to move now! Victory lies ahead. As you can see, apparently Glory I to, to the cleanse on my bar. There we go. Oh no. Excellent! And with no time to waste, let's move! Yep, it's probably a really good idea. I just want my weapon. I didn't want this. Everything is in place for me to complete the ritual. All of you, defend the tunnel! I'm out of range. thing is too powerful! Focus on staying alive and keep it at bay! Just a few more moments. Stay strong. up the hammer. In so doing, you will ensure Tyr's remains are protected for all time. Oops. It's up here.
We have the hammer! Everyone run! The tomb is collapsing! Your escape means nothing. We'll find you again. Apologies for the hasty retreat. The tomb's collapse was triggered by the hammer's removal. Though his halls are no more, I'm out Tyr of range. is now protected by several tons of stone and water. The prison is buried as well. I can think of no one better to hold the silver hand. Wield it well. Return to Tyrosus and tell him of our success. We will meet again. We will prevail. Walk always in the light. Always count on me. Take care of yourself out there. can I do for you? Can I help you? Azeroth will not fall while we stand. May the light give you strength. These fine men and women need a leader. Your deeds prove you are the clear choice to bear that burden. 
Come, I will address them on your behalf. Paladins of Azeroth, you've gathered to mourn the loss of High Lord Tyrion Fordring. Many of you look to him as an ideal, the paragon of what we all strive to be. Let us observe a moment of silence for a great soldier, leader, and friend. In the light we are one, brother. Always. Inscribe your name into the Librum of Ancient Kings, so that we may begin the ceremony. You all know the noble deeds of the champion at my side. This hero has been chosen by the Light to succeed Tyrion as High Lord. Under our new leader, this order shall become a mighty weapon brought to bear against the Legion. We must stand together against the coming darkness. We must cast aside the shackles of race and kingdom. We must unite as one! The Blood Knights stand by you, High Lord. Azeroth will not fall. We pledge ourselves to your cause, High Lord. The Legion will not break us. On this day, the Order of the Silver Hand is reborn. Together, Sargeras himself shall shudder at our might. Okay, pretty neat, uh, pretty RP-tastic, but uh, it's a lot of fun. I, I enjoy this quest line a lot, especially um, when you're doing it for the different different paladin classes, depending on which one you want to be. At uh, your so we'll service. We've done it, High Lord. The Order of the Silver Hand is reborn. Even the most nefarious Legion Lords fear your presence on the battlefield, yet they are relentless, fashioning ever more terrible horrors and fiends in the hopes of countering your might. High Lord, we must augment your power to maintain our edge over the enemy. The altar behind you holds within it the essence of the countless heroes of the light buried in these sacred halls. Place your weapon upon the altar and imbue it with new strength. Walk, place all. the blade on the altar when you are ready. This the light is will be our forge. going to be your forge. Um, click on it here. And this is UI pops up. So, uh, we're going to, this is a tutorial. Virtues of the light. It's got one rank. Critical strike chance will be increased by 3% uh, when using, or when putting this in. Uh, and as you can see, uh, for tutorial purposes, they give you 100 artifact power to start. And, we'll and that is going to unlock quite a few different ones. As you can see, some of them have a uh, golden portrait around a golden dragon portrait. Those are the top tier. Uh, artifacts, talents that you're going to want. Uh, and we're going to talk about this really quickly. I'm going to go over this. Uh, this is Tears Deliverance. You get this when you equip the weapon. Uh, it's one rank. You will always have it as the weapon uh, is equipped. It's a 1.5 minute cooldown with a just under two second cast. It releases the light within the silver hand for 10 seconds, healing an injured ally within 15 yards for just under 10,000 every one second. Allies healed also receive 20% increased healing from your holy light and flash of light spells for 10 seconds. Uh, it's, it's, we'll see, I'll show you the ability uh, when we're done here, but that is a, a, is a very strong ability. It's one of the one of the more powerful ones. I really like that one. Uh, and we just talked about Virtues of the Light. Let's move on. We have Knight of the Silver Hand. It's three rank passive. After judgment strikes an enemy, all damage you take for the next four seconds is reduced by three percent. Now these will all have, uh, by the way, different artifact power costs that will unlock as you move around. How about we have that one? And then we have here second sunrise, three rank passive. Light of dawn has a five percent chance to cast a second time for no additional mana cost. That'll be a, a great AOE healing uh, tool. Here we have Templar of the Light, a one rank passive. 
increases the duration of aura mastery by two seconds. And here we have Vindicator, a one rank passive. Activating Avenging Wrath increases critical healing by 25% for 10 seconds. Moving up, we have Deliver the Light, a three rank passive. Increases healing done by Holy Light and Flash of Light by 3%. And by the way, these are per rank, just in case anyone there was any confusion uh, when you have these three ranks. So this, uh, once you have three points in this, it'll be up to 9%. Uh, we'll move over here. Focused Healing Passive reduces the cooldown on Lay of Hands by 10%. There's three ranks in that. Justice Through Sacrifice, rank, uh, excuse me, three ranks, uh, increases healing done by Light of the Martyr by 5%. And we have Share the Burden, three ranks, reduces the damage you take by Blessing, uh, from Blessing of Sacrifice by 10%. Then we have protecting our protection of the light, a one rank passive, which increases the duration of divine protection by four seconds. Here we have shock treatment, three rank passive, increases the critical strike damage and critical healing of holy shock by eight percent per rank. Blessings of the silver hand, three rank passive, reduces the cooldown of blessing of freedom, protection, and sacrifice by five percent. Here we have expel the darkness. Uh, three rank passive, which increases healing done by Light of Dawn by 3% per rank. And then we'll move on to these. We have Power of the Silver Hand, a one rank passive. Holy Light and Flash of Light have a chance to unlock the Power of the Silver Hand, increasing the healing of your next Holy Shock by 20% of all damage and effective healing you do within the next 10 seconds. That's a really strong one. And we have the Light Saves, a one rank passive. When the health of your Beacon of Light target falls below 50%, your next Holy Light or Flash of Light on your Beacon of Light target will heal for an additional 100% and can only occur once every 30 seconds. That's going to be incredibly powerful. Uh, Paladins back to main tank healing, I guess. Uh, and Protection of Tear, a one rank passive. Aura Mastery also increases all healing received by party or raid members within 40 yards by 15%. Uh, Paladins are looking really strong. Holy Paladins, uh, uh, their abilities and their talents here uh, are really powerful. So uh, I, I can definitely see them being on top of meters during mythics and, and uh, well, yeah, mythic raiding. Uh, now, we'll talk about these really quickly. Uh, there are three artifact slots. As you can see, one is locked until, I believe, uh, 110. Um, but we have three artifact slots. You'll get these as you go through, as you're questing, as you're doing dungeons, as you're raiding, etc. And world quests. You'll get uh, artifacts to put in here that will augment some of these abilities. Let's say, for instance, you have all three points in Expel the Darkness. Uh, there may be an artifact slot here that gives you plus two to this, uh, so you'll get an extra two ranks, and that'll increase. So that's really neat. Also, these will add item levels uh, to your weapon. So that'll, uh, that'll help out, that'll help increase your healing power. Obviously, up here you see a number. This number is your ranks purchased. These are, uh, this is a passive that you get. It's pretty much the same for everyone, uh, but this particular one is stamina is increased by 0.75% for every trait purchased, up to 34 traits, and your damage is increased by 1% for every trait purchased, up to 34 traits as well. So you'll get a, you'll get a little minor uh, boost as you're going around. By the time you hit 110, from what I've seen, you can usually get to maybe one or two of these uh, before you have to hit world quests to make a lot of artifact power to level up the rest. So it's not very, it's pretty easy in the beginning. It's very straightforward. This UI uh, is easy to bring up. You can open your menu, shift, uh, right click, and it will bring it up. But the only place you can actually put artifact power in is at your class forge which for the paladin is going to be right there now let's talk to tyrosis and move forward we will prevail i will continue beseeching the light to bolster the power of your weapon for now its newfound strength should be more than enough i think we are ready to reintroduce ourselves to the legion on the broken isle lord grayson shadowbreaker has volunteered to help coordinate our forces on the ground you should speak with him immediately high lord you can always Lord count Shadowbreaker on me. will be expecting you. This way. 
Also, if you've noticed, there is a little uh, bar at the top. Whenever you enter your class hall, this will show up. Uh, Lights Hope it tells you where you are. Obviously, Lights Hope Chapel. And here is your order resources. Uh, they're basically your garrison resources. They will be used to send some of your followers, which you will get uh, through questing, etc. Uh, on missions to get you artifact power, gold, uh, and sometimes just Lord to Shadowbreaker. Quests. The High Lord would like to peruse the reconnaissance you've gathered on the Broken Isles. Oh, he's over here. It's an interesting way to go to talk to him, is to face this direction. Let's go ahead and talk well to him. Well met. Now is the time to strike back against the Legion. The Legion still believes us crippled from the Broken Shore. They think we are, excuse me, they think we are unable to fight back. Let's prove them wrong. We've been hard at work mapping out the Broken Isles, learning everything we can about each region for our imminent assault. Once you've had the chance to pursue the map, or excuse me, peruse the map, you should leave for Dalaran at once and charge into the Maw of the Beast. We will end this madness for good. Light help us all. Light bless you. This is your scouting map. Uh, you will... I'll bring it up so you can get a look at it. You will come here uh, occasionally to pick where you're going to go, obviously here. You're in the tutorial mode. Pardon me. You're in the tutorial, so this will tell you um, where you're going to start. These will give you little um, ideas of what the different zones are and what you'll be doing in those zones. Uh, obviously, Suramar here in the middle, you won't do two. You'll two you are 110. Um, for the purposes of this, we're just going to click Stormheim. The others you can pick, uh, all of these level up with you. Uh, so if you go to Stormheim, whether it's at 100 or 110, uh, all the mobs will be the exact same level as you. So it's it's really neat. It doesn't prevent you from questing with someone else. Uh, you will see the mob at 110, while your no your 105 friend will see the mobs at 105. It doesn't make it more difficult for him. You're not going to be phased away from him or her. So be aware of that. Um, but you will come back here after you finish your first zone, and then you'll pick your second, your third, etc. Doesn't matter which end you start with, just mix and mash, pick which one you think is the is the f most fun. I particularly like Stormheim, but all the other zones are actually uh, pretty incredible themselves. Light be with you. Uh, good luck out there, we're all in this together. For the Alliance. So we'll head over here, and this is how you get back to Dalaran. There's, there's much more um, to this uh, area, as you'll find out. But we're, we're not going to get into that right now. I'll let you kind of get get an idea of that as you go through the game. But this is how you get back to Dalaran. Uh, there's a little portal here. And we'll just click on that. To get the Stormheim quest started. And we're going to head to Stormwind. And I will show you uh, the weapon and our talents and abilities the Holy Paladins will be using. As you can see, um, I do have quite a bit on my bars here. Um, so there is a little bit of bloat left over for the Holy Paladin, but it's nothing like it used to be. Victory in battle is the well only met. path. I have come peace. on behalf of King Anduin Rin. My crew is preparing for a special mission, and the king would like you to join us. Please review this official summons, and if you are satisfied, return with me to Stormwind Harbor. Roger seals you, uh, hands you a sealed envelope. For the alliance. Click on the envelope here. Champion. The Skyfire is about to embark on an urgent mission. I must ask that you accompany them. Report to Stormwind Harbor as soon as possible. They are under strict orders not to leave without you. Follow me. The Skyfire is just about ready to leave. I trust that your valor and discretion will serve the Alliance well, as it always has. With honor, King Anduin Rin. Okay, and that's the portal that will take you to Stormwind to start the assault. If you do Stormheim, you'll talk to this woman right here. We're not going to do that. We're going to head off and go take a look at our abilities. We'll head over to the area in Stormwind with the test dummies so I can show you maybe Crusader Strike, etc. Um, we'll go take a look at all of our abilities. As you can see, they fixed the uh, park here in Stormwind. Looks really nice. Uh, there's a lot of spoilers in <laughs> these these videos. Unfortunately, I'm not uh, I'm not the best at pointing out when you're going to see them. Obviously, we just saw King Anduin 
So, uh, there's an obvious... There's an obvious death there. I'm not going to say what for, for new people, but uh, obviously there was a death. So, this spot right here, this is my little my little hidey hole where I show everything off. While everybody else does their thing. So here is the Silver Hand. In my opinion, one of the coolest looking artifact weapons in the game. Uh, pretty neat. It's, it's definitely something different because paladins are used to using one-handers and a shield for their healing. And this time around, you might be asking, a two-hander? Huh, that's going to leave us very vulnerable. And you would be wrong. That's right. You would be wrong. And this is why. Take a look at the item itself. Uh, the silver hand, it starts at level, our item level 750. Has intellect, stamina, crit, and mastery. As you can see, you have an equip bonus of increased armor by 30%. That makes up for you not having that shield. So you won't be as squishy as you think, especially in PvP. Uh, that's definitely something that you're going to be uh, worried about. I know I was until I went on the PvP server and noticed that. You're really not going to have much of a problem. They don't hit you as hard as you think they would. Uh, and the other equip bonus is our ability down here, which we uh, already talked about. And we'll get a look at that in just a moment. But what we'll do now is we'll open to our talents and take a look. Uh, in the 15 tier, we have Bestow Faith, a 12-second cooldown uh, instant heal, in, which infuses a friendly target with faith for 5 seconds, healing them for 39,720 at the end. We have Light's Hammer. Uh, we've seen Light's Hammer before. We know exactly what this is, so I'm not going to read through it. But uh, it's the exact same thing as it was before. Uh, Crusader's Might is a passive. Crusader Strike reduces the cooldown of Holy Shock and Light of Dawn by 1.5 seconds. Uh, this might be nice for while you're if you're going to solo level. So while I say, uh, you know, uh, I, I prefer Bestow Faith as a healer, you might prefer one of these two uh, for while you're leveling. And and uh, by no means is my build optimal. This is just what I picked for uh, purposes of this video. In the 32 year we have Divine Steed. If you've played Diablo, it's pretty much the, exactly what you would expect. Uh, you will jump on a mount for 3 seconds, and you can run around unhindered. Uh, it's also usable while in combat, so it's good in PvP to get away from people. Uh, Unbreakable Spirit Passive reduces the cooldown of your Divine Shield, Divine Protection, and Lay on Hands by 30 seconds. And we have Rule of Law, which is instant, a 30 second recharge time. It increases the range of your heals and the reach of Mastery Lightbringer by 50% for 10 seconds. Uh, in the 45 tier, we have Fist of Justice. Judgment reduces the remaining cooldown on Hammer of Justice by 10 seconds. Let's move uh, so you're not hearing all this crap in the background. I just realized that. I apologize. Uh, and then we have Repentance. Repentance is the exact same thing uh, that it was before. Forces an enemy target to meditate incapacitating the target and dealing up to a maximum of 25% of the target's health in damage over one minute. That's the little bit of difference. So uh, Repentance is pretty neat. And then Binding Light. I believe this is the exact same thing as on live. It's on a 1.5 minute cooldown. Uh, it deals 21,000 damage and causes them to wander disoriented for 6 seconds. In the 60 tier, we have Devotion Aura. Uh, passive allies within 10 yards take 20% reduced damage, split over the number of allies within the aura. While Aura Mastery is active, all affected allies gain the full damage reduction. So it'll be really good for Mythics and Mythic Rating, I believe. Uh, and then we have Aura of Sacrifice. While you are above 75% health, 10% of all damage taken by allies within 10 yards is redirected to you. While Aura Mastery is active, 10% of all effective healing you deal is replicated to all allies within the area. And then we have Aura of Mercy, a passive that restores uh, just under 1,000 health to 3 injured allies within 10 yards every second. So, that's a pretty neat one. I picked that one just for this, uh, so because I didn't plan on having any allies. So, <laughs> that's, um, that's I'm sad now. Uh, and in the 75 tier, we have Divine Purpose, Light of Dawn, and Holy Shock have a 15% chance to not start their cooldown and make their next cast free. And we have Holy Avenger, uh, increases the haste by 30%, and your Holy Shock healing by 30% for 20 seconds. And we have Holy Prism, which I believe is the same as on live. An enemy target takes 21,000 holy damage and radiates 13,000 healing to five near... Uh, 
nearby allies within 15 yards, and a friendly target is healed for 26,500 and radiates uh, 16,000 holy damage to five nearby enemies within 15 yards. And we move into the 90 tier, we have Fervent Martyr. Uh, passive casting holy light or flash of light on your beacon of light reduces the cost of your next light of the martyr by 35% stacking. I'm not quite sure what that one is. But there it is. For all you holy paladin fans, you know you know you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Sanctified Wrath. Avenging Wrath lasts 50% longer and also reduces holy shock's cooldown by 50% for its duration. Then we have Judgment of Light. Uh, judgment now applies a Judgment of Light to the target, causing the next 40 successful attacks against the target to heal the attacker for 1,324. This effect can occur only once per second on each target. Uh, pretty neat. I, it, it works for allies, by the way. So it's, it'd be good in a good in a raid, good in a mythic dungeon. Uh, it, it's it's a nice passive that you don't have to worry about triggering. Uh, kind of give it flat heals. Work well with, I think, Aura of Mercy. Uh, and then we have the 100 tier. We have Beacon of Faith. Uh, marks a second target as a beacon, mimicking the effects of a Beacon of Light. Your heals will now heal both of your beacons, but at a 20% reduced effectiveness. We have a Beacon of the Lightbringer. Mastery Lightbringer now increases your healing based on the target's proximity to either you or your Beacon of Light, whichever is closer. The healing and range of Light of Dawn are increased by 30%. And then we have Beacon of Virtue, which fully replaces Beacon of Light, by the way. Uh, apply a Beacon of Light to your target and three injured allies within 30 yards for 8 seconds. Well, while it's on a 12 second cooldown, your heals will heal all of them for 40% of the amount healed. So if your, your raid doesn't have a ton of AoE, you could take this one uh, for heroics, mythics, uh, and even into raiding. I think that one would be really, really useful. So there we go. We've took a, taken a look at our talents. I'm going to switch to Divine Steed here. We all know what Light's Hammer looks like, uh, but Divine Steed is something new. So we're going to throw that on our bar so we can take a look at the animations here in a moment after we look at our other abilities. Um, Divine Shield is still there. It's the exact same. Consecration back once again. So that's nice. That's a nice addition. Helps you helps you do a little bit of damage. Avenging Wrath is the exact same thing. Uh, Flash of Light, a quick but expensive heal, healing a friendly target for 28,000. Obviously, uh, that's been around for a long time. Aura Mastery empowers your chosen, excuse me, empowers your chosen aura and increases its radius to 40 yards for six seconds. Aura of Mercy has no target limit and healing increased by 100%. So. This makes your Aura Mercy really, really powerful. Uh, Divine Protection, same. Blessing of Protection is the same. We have Blessing of Freedom, which is the same. Lay on Hands hasn't changed. Absolution is a new spell. 100-yard uh, range returns all dead party members to life with 35% of maximum health and mana. Uh, this is basically the old um, guild perk where you could res everyone. Except it doesn't have a... Uh, it doesn't have a cooldown, so or it doesn't uh, place a cooldown on everyone in the uh, array, the debuff. So that's nice. Uh, bestow faith we talked about. Judgment is the same except for this little bit of difference and causes the target to take 30% increased damage from your Crusader Strike and Holy Shock for six seconds. So when you're doing uh, your leveling, you put Judgment down, throw on a Crusader and a Holy Shock, and you'll get the 30% increased damage from both. Uh, Holy Shock is the same. Holy Shock also has double the normal critical strike chance. I think that's the exact same thing as it is on live. And Holy Light, same thing uh, as it was on live. Slow, but sturdy spell. Uh, just want to take a look at something. Holy Light heals four. Didn't see that. Let me do it one more time here. Holy Light heals for 46,057. Flash of Light. 46... I'm not sure if those numbers are correct or if it's supposed to be that way, because um, it seems that it would be a little inefficient to have them do the exact same thing. Uh, you'll have, we'll, we'll have to take a look at that later. I'll come back to that at some point, and I'll put in... 
Actually, I'll ask some, some guild mates to see if that's supposed to be the way it is. Anyway, back to Crusader Strike. Uh, you have Crusader Strike on uh, two charges now. They recharge every four and a half seconds, roughly. Uh, that'll be your bread and butter. Hammer Justice is the exact same. We have Light of the Dawn. Uh, I believe this is the same as on live. Unleashes a wave of holy energy, healing up to five injured allies within a 15-yard frontal cone for 11,916. As you can see, by the way, I forgot to mention earlier in the video, no more holy power. No more holy power. Yay! I hated that. I hated that as a healer. Uh, and then Light of the Martyr, 40 yard range. This is a little bit of a different one. Sacrifice a portion of your own health to instantly heal an ally for 33,000. You take damage equal to 50% of the healing done, so you'll lose roughly uh, 16 and a half thousand health. It's actually not that big of a deal. Uh, does not cause your beacon of light to be healed and cannot be cast on yourself. Uh, blessing of Sacrifice places a blessing on a party or raid member transferring 30% of the damage taken to you for 12 seconds or until your transferred damage would cause you to fall below 20% health. Uh, that's a good one. Same as same as live, I believe. Uh, cleanse is the same beacon of light, I believe is the same, but we'll read it anyway. Your heals on other party or raid members will also heal the beacon of light target for up to 40% of the amount healed. Your flash and holy light on the beacon of light target will also refund oops refund 30% of their mana cost and beacon of faith we talked about so we're gonna take a quick look at the animations before we finish the video to see if anything's changed we'll start with uh, blinding light nothing spectacular by the way my animations are not on ultra I do have uh, a limited <laughs> amount of power in my PC uh, so, unfortunately, I'm not running this on Ultra. It may look different for you if you have a high-end gaming PC. I do not, unfortunately. So, I don't have the greatest game uh, graphics card. But we'll take a look at Divine Shield. Pretty neat. Consecration. A little bit different. I like the animation that comes along with that. Gives it a little bit of flavor. We have Avenging Wrath. Pretty much the same. Now we'll take a look at our heals that we already went through. Nothing too special. Aura Mastery. Nothing. Uh, Divine Protection. Nothing is nothing is nothing is special. We'll take a look at Bop. Exact same. Blessing of Freedom. Same thing. Nothing. Nothing spectacular. And now we'll take a look at our... Actually, can I cast Absolution? Yeah, it just looks like Redemption. Uh, we'll take a look at Tears Deliverance. Well, so that was your uh, Artifact Weapon ability. It's pretty, pretty decent. Obviously, uh, Maybe on Ultra that looks a little bit better. Uh, then we have Bestow Faith. Don't really see anything there. Holy Shock hasn't changed. Uh, we have Light of the Dawn. I still love that ability. I think that's that's really cool looking. Let's see if I can cast Light of the Martyr on someone. How are you? You can tell. Get a little. Yeah, we can tell with that spell. Pretty neat. Uh, can we cast Beacon on him? Yeah, there we go. Let's see if we can cast Beacon of Faith. Pretty much the exact same animation. And we'll take a look, since we're here, at some of our attack animations. There's our basic auto attack. Our Judgment. A little bit different. Our Holy Shock. Our Fallen Attack. Judgment is a little bit different as you can see we have an ability come down from call down from the sky crusader strike mind you the numbers that you're seeing here are on an 85 uh, target dummy so you're not going to be hitting for 35 uh, 350,000 rather and another crusader strike in here one more judgment and that is it except for one ability and we'll show that one now Divine Steed. Take a look at this. 
obviously, I do want to point out that the Draenei, I have the Elec, but for other Paladins, you'll have your, uh, your Charger, so you won't have the Elec. I think that's Draenei only. So, and I think it's the Sunwalker Kodo for the Tauren. Uh, so, uh, I just want to thank you guys for sticking with me through this video. I know it was a little bit long, but we had a, uh, I think we had a good time. Uh, I did want to point out, by the way, that when you have the silver hand, even though it's not on your hand, you have a little book. You have your little Librum, like the old Burning Crusade uh, cinematic. So it's a little nice little touch, nice little touch to go with that. So, uh, again, everybody, I do want to thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them uh, for me, and I'll, I'll get back to you as soon as I have the opportunity. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Uh, and you guys have a wonderful evening.